Hello everyone, welcome to another SurviveCoastGuardBootCamp.com video tutorial. Today we're going to discuss required knowledge. So my goal is to get you guys as ready as you could possibly be when you show up on day one at the Cape May Training Center. And one of the most important aspects of getting ready is knowing your required knowledge. Um, required knowledge is something you get quizzed on every single day for pretty much the entire time you are at Cape May. Um, with that said, there's some components to it that, are, uh, that aren't fully covered before you actually get there. And so my goal with this video is to fill in those missing pieces for you. So the four most common things you get quizzed on with required knowledge at Cape May are the following. Rates and ranks, chain of command, 11 general orders, and daily information. So we're going to go over those um, in that order. And uh, again, I'm going to attempt to fill in the, uh, the missing pieces for you. Let's go. I'm not going to cover this because you should already know these, but I do want to mention them because they are really the foundation of your rates and ranks knowledge. So you should know the titles of all the pay grades for all the enlisted personnel, E1 through E10, the warrant officers, W2 through W4, and the officer corps, O1 through O10. For example, the title of an E7 pay grade is Chief Petty Officer, and the title of an O5 pay grade is Commander, so you guys should know those already. The part that's not in your helmsman, and uh, certainly I had no knowledge that we even had to know this uh, before I went to boot camp, um, is being able to describe the shoulder insignia and collar device for the enlisted ranks, and the shoulder board insignia, collar device, and lacing for the entire officer corps. So what do I mean by that? Let's, um, let's start with an example. So in front of you, you see a picture of an O4 pay grade, which is Lieutenant Commander. You see how there's kind of three images there. So the top image is the collar device. The image to the left is the shoulder insignia, and the image to, to the right is the lacing. Now, only the officers have the lacing. For uh, an enlisted person, it would just be collar device and shoulder insignia. So for this example, for a Lieutenant Commander, the collar device is 01 gold oak leaf. The shoulder insignia is 01 half inch gold stripe, then a 01 quarter inch gold stripe, followed by another 01 half inch gold stripe with a gold shield on a field of blue. Now in this example for an 04, you'll notice that the shoulder insignia I just described is exactly the same as the lacing, the, uh, the bottom right picture. They're not all like that, but a lot of them are, which is very helpful because it's one less thing you have to memorize. Now I'd like to walk you through what this actually looks like on a daily basis. The most common place you get quizzed on for required knowledge is in the galley, uh, usually when you're leaving the galley, but sometimes the, uh, the company commanders also like to harass you even when you're eating. Um, you do get quizzed other times during the day, but um, again, the galley is the most common place. So um, let's take a hypothetical example of uh, our characters will be Petty Officer Allen and Seaman Recruit Pierce. Pierce! Pierce, I, Petty Officer Allen. Pierce, what is the title of an Oscar IV pay grade? Petty Officer Allen, Seaman Recruit Pierce, I request to inform you that the title of an Oscar IV is Lieutenant Commander. What does the shoulder board insignia of an Oscar IV pay grade look like? Petty Officer Allen, Seaman Recruit Pierce, I request to inform you that the shoulder board insignia of a Lieutenant Commander is 01 half inch gold stripe followed by a 01 quarter inch gold stripe followed by another 01 half inch gold stripe with a gold shield on a field of blue. Very well, go away. All right, you guys, a uh, couple takeaways from that. Takeaway number one, see this lovely facial hair that I have? Um, definitely, you cannot have that. Um, I'm sure you already know that, but um, I mean, you have to be really, really clean shaven for, uh, for the males. For females, your hair has to be really slicked back and in a bun. I mean, they want it like dripping in gel. Um, 
you know, if, you, if you're not clean shaven, that's a surefire way to get called on um, at any time, really. It's just, it's like a dead, it's basically like wearing a sign that says, hey, call on me for required knowledge. Um, so make sure you guys don't look like this. Um, uh, second takeaway is, uh, if you noticed when I was responding um, as Seaman Recruit Pierce, uh, to Petty Officer Allen, I was actually looking down. Uh, that's because I was actually reading the response. Um, you know, I wanted it to be really on point because that's the way it has to be when you're responding and my memory is not, you know, 100% for me to recite it exactly, perfectly, attention to detail, the whole nine, um, the way you have to do it in boot camp. So I was actually reading it, um, but uh, normally when you would respond, you don't look down. You actually look straight ahead eyes in the boat, um, do not look the company commanders in the eye though, you just literally just straight ahead, just keep staring dead on as you're responding. Never look them in the eye, they'll, they'll start screaming at you. Um, and the last thing I wanna say is, uh, you know, this. I don't wanna make this video like a half hour long, so I'll show you guys a couple more of those. Um, I'll probably, I'll go through the warrant officers. Um, I'll, I'll show you the uh, descriptions for the warrant officers real quick so that we can cover some of the other missing pieces. Um, but everything, all of them are in the Coast Guard Boot Camp Survival Guide. So that whole description and everything you saw um, for the 04, I put it, uh, I put it for all of them. Um, you know, E1 through E10, the warrant officers, and the uh, entire officer corps. It's all in the book. Um, but in the meantime, let me show you the uh, the warrant officers. Our first example is Chief Warrant Officer 2. I want to speed through these pretty quickly so we can move on to talking about chain of command. But one thing I want you to be aware of is if you read the description for the shoulder insignia, you'll notice it says the following. One half inch gold band with zero three blue breaks with a gold shield on top and a rating symbol above it on a field of blue. You don't have to memorize or mention that gold dot at the top. Now for the subsequent examples of Chief Warrant Officers 3 and 4, I leave out the part about the gold shield, the rating symbol, and the field of blue. But when you memorize them, you still have to include that in the description. These picks were taken directly from the Coast Guard Boot Camp Survival Guide, and for whatever reason when I was writing it, I only mentioned the band and the breaks in the other picks. I'm going to update that soon to make it clearer, but just be aware that you do have to include the gold shield and the rating symbol on a field of blue for all three shoulder insignia descriptions. Okay, now let's move on to the chain of command. In the helmsman, you will find a page that lists the chain of command, and it looks much like this. It's also going to tell you that you have to know your chain of command uh, when you get to Cape May. All this is true. The part that they fail to mention is that you not only have to know this list in order, but you also have to know who the actual people are. In other words, the commander in chief is Barack Obama. You have to know the actual person. Um, so getting this list ahead of time is a bit tricky and you can't get the whole list. For example, there's no way to know who your lead company commander is gonna be until you actually get there. Um, but you can get a decent amount of the list if you do a little bit of research. I would start by asking your recruiter to see if your recruiter can get you a lot of those names. Um, another thing you can do is uh, the Coast Guard website actually the official website has this thing called the welcome aboard package so go on google and type in coast guard boot camp welcome aboard package and the first result that comes up should be an official coast guard website that lets you download that package um, and that should have some info in it um, the page itself might also even have the commanding officer's name but uh, just do a little bit of research and try to really fill in the actual names of those people because you're gonna to have to know them and uh, you will be quizzed on them on a daily basis. Um, this is again one of the things you get quizzed on the most often. So um, that's it uh, for this section. Let's go on to 11 general orders. So with the 11 general orders, it's not so much a case of missing information like it is with rates and ranks and chain of command, but uh, I really want to just emphasize how important it is to memorize these exactly to the word um, as they are written. Uh, so, you know, you can't make any mistakes at all, even on one word. And I'll give you an example. So, general order number three, to report all violations of orders I am instructed to enforce. Now, let's say you said to report any violations of orders I am instructed to enforce. That's an automatic mistake, automatic performance tracker. Now, later on, you will get a chance to make up for it. Uh, once you learn how to speak and respond correctly, they will give you a chance to uh, make up for the mistake. And I teach you that in chapter six of the Coast Guard Bootcamp Survival Guide. But ideally, you wanna show up knowing these by heart on day one. 
The reason is because when you are called upon by a company commander to recite them, you will be in a much different environment than when you're learning them in your own home. First of all, you'll always be sleep deprived, some days more than others, and second of all, many times, especially in the galley, there will be lots of chaos and screaming going on all around you. This makes it a lot harder to focus, so you really need to make sure these 11 general orders are embedded into your brain before you get there. With that said, we can cover the last part of required knowledge, which is daily information. As the name suggests, daily information is information that is updated daily. This is why you can't learn it ahead of time, but I at least want you all to be familiar with what it is and what it's called. Also, some of the daily information actually comes from knowing who's who in the chain of command. Okay, so the daily information you will be responsible for memorizing every morning will be the officer of the day, the training duty officer of the day, and sexton hall watch officer of the day. And you'll also have to know the nautical term of the day. Sometimes they throw in a few other facts, but those are the four main pieces of information you'll have to know every day. Which is why I keep stressing to you guys to learn this stuff before you get there. Your life will be a hundred times easier. With that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. Stay tuned for more videos, and in the meantime, check out the website, or if you really want to take your preparations to the next level, feel free to head on over to ClickBank and get your copy of the Coast Guard Bootcamp Survival Guide. That's it for now. I wish you all the best of luck in your preparation.